Welcome to Talmudic Treasures. Today we're learning Yevamos page 73, which asks the question, which takes up most of this page, when it comes to an oral, namely someone who did not have the ritual circumcision, we've been learning in the previous pages that that individual is not allowed to eat, if he's a Kohen, this special food known as truma. Also on Passover, that individual will not be allowed to partake of the Paschal sacrifice, the carbon Pesach. The Talmud wonders, what is the law when it comes to Meiser Shani? Meiser Shani, as we know, during the seven-year Shemitah cycle, the first, second, and fourth, and fifth years, we give something called Meiser Shani. We actually don't give it to anyone. It's taken 10% of our produce to Jerusalem, and there it is eaten. Now, if you have a lot of fruit, one of the ways to get around it is a person is able to redeem their fruit onto money, and then they can bring that money to Jerusalem. Now, the question that is asked is, what is the law, again, when it comes to this oral? Do we allow this person to be able to eat Meiser Shani? Now, again, when it comes to Truma, it's something which is strict in many regards, especially that only a Kohen is allowed to eat it. And in fact, it gives a whole list of ways in which Truma is different than Meiser Shani. One, of course, a non-Kohen is allowed to eat Meiser Shani. And it goes through many, many other cases. But it does not mention this one, which... The Talmud therefore wishes to derive that this must mean that there is no difference. Just like an oral is not allowed to eat truma, so too he is not allowed to eat this food, miser. And on this, the Talmud gives a answer which is often given, that ton of shire, that sometimes we mention a long list, but that doesn't mean that anything that's left out of it, we could derive any conclusion. It's possible that there are other things that are just left out on this list. And the Talmud always asks the question, Mashir de Haishir, what else is being missed on this list? In other words, it's not possible that the only thing that's missing is one statement, one difference, because then it would have been mentioned. The only time things will be left out is if there are multiple things missing. And that's a very famous question that goes throughout many places in the Talmud. But we also derive this concept in our lives that when it comes to being left out, if let's say everyone is invited to a party and one child is left out from that party, that is a problem. However, if for whatever reason, let's say multiple people are left out, it's not just one person then becomes less of an issue. So this is a concept that perhaps can be drawn into other things as well, that when it comes to life, to exclude one person or one thing, that in itself doesn't make sense, and that you shouldn't do. A person wishes to exclude others, numerous, that's okay. But just to find that one individual and to exclude them, that is something in which is not done.